Hey guys and happy Wednesday. So today I have five DIYs for you for five under five dollars each. First DIY I'm going to be using this tin. It is from a guava paste that I absolutely love. If you haven't tried it you definitely have to. It is uh, phenomenal. And I'm also going to be using this candle like the jar from a candle from the Dollar Tree. I love the shape. I think they still have them out. So, you know, if not, you can use whatever, maybe even another tin can if you wanted to. Wipe them down with some alcohol, and then I'm going to take my Gorilla Super Glue. This is the gel, and I'm going to put um, a combo of the super glue and hot glue. I absolutely love, love, love the super glue. I love Gorilla Glue Sticks. I'm not sponsored. I just, I really like them because they work so well. And... Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take that candle jar and I'm going to stick it to the bottom of the tin. I went back and forth as to whether I wanted it to kind of look like a scalloped one or do it this way. I decided to do it this way just because you can see the candle jar a little bit better. So once the whole thing was glued together, I was debating whether I wanted to use these beads along the rim just to kind of cover that that lip there. And I decided that I didn't want them. <laughs> so I just went ahead and I spray painted them with this matte vintage blue. And I didn't show a picture of it because I forgot. So you'll see that at the end. So then for my next DIY, you're going to use one of these. I know that they had these little graduation decors at the Dollar Tree, or at least I saw somebody haul them. Um, but I got this one at Family Dollar and it was a dollar there as well. I'm just going to go ahead, remove all the tinsel and the little tassel, any anything that was on there. I just removed everything and put that to the side because, I mean, you could use it for another project if you wanted to. I'm not big on tinsel, but, you know, if you are, then this would be great. Probably like for Halloween or something like that, you could probably use that. But again, I'm just going to remove everything. And when in the process of removing one of the tags, I broke one of the little plastic pieces there and I just that's when I realized that, that I broke it but it's okay I just put some hot glue on it and it stuck just fine I was able to use it no problem so um, once I fixed that little problem there I got some popsicle sticks they're the medium size ones um, just a little bit smaller than the jumbo and just a little bit bigger than the large I don't know I think these are called like jumbo those are I don't know there's giant and jumbo large whatever it is these are like the giant ones oh no I'm sorry these are the jumbo ones Ugh. so I'm just gonna go ahead and line them up and I'm gonna make a top to this so I'm gonna line up six of them they fit on there exactly how I wanted them to then I'm gonna measure two more um, just to kind of put along the bottom of it to hold those popsicle sticks together. I hope that makes sense. You'll see what I'm talking about here in a second. But I'm just going to cut two pieces down. And it's going to end up looking like a little fence. But that's just to hold all the popsicle sticks together. Um, trying to eliminate as much of the gaps in between those popsicle sticks you know, as possible. I could have just hot glued them together. But I didn't want that gap in between all of them. There's already... A little bit so I'm just gonna take some hot glue and put it on the, the popsicle stick that I cut and I'm gonna put that on one side and then I'm gonna take the stand or what is now the stand <laughs> I'm gonna measure it to make sure that I put the other popsicle stick in the right spot so I'm just gonna go ahead kind of mark where the end of that one's gonna go and do the same thing go ahead and hot glue that one on there and I was going to cut all this out so, you know, because it's kind of redundant, you knew what I was going to do. I could have just explained it, but I figured I'd show you how I did it. And then I just wanted to make sure that everything was going to fit right. And I wanted there to be a little bit of a lip on either side because I am going to put another popsicle stick, more popsicle sticks around the outside to kind of make a little, not ledge, but to kind of cover up that black part of the top so here you see I'm just I marked it off and then I'm just going to cut those edges off you can use scissors you can do this beforehand 
I found this to be the easiest so I just went ahead used my box cutter cut them and then sanded down those rough edges and then what you're gonna do is you're either gonna stain it or paint it or you know whatever you want it, it's totally up to you but I went ahead and then I measured out the sides of it and like I said I'm kind of making a um, I guess like a frame or like a little shadow box to put on top of this little um, cap <laughs> to make it look like a little tear tray or like a little stand and um, again I'm just taking a popsicle stick measuring it out and I'm gonna measure out all four sides so I have obviously a side for each you know each one and then I'm just going to put a thin thin strip of hot glue along the bottom edge or I guess that's the top edge and just glue them all the way around and I'm also going to glue them to each other you'll see what I'm talking about um yeah so I'm just gonna go ahead and do that and like I said it's gonna end up being like a little shadow box but it's gonna be the top of a little tray so I'm gonna go ahead take care of all those I'm not gonna show you me doing all of them once I get them all stuck together I'm gonna go ahead and just put another little bead of hot glue on the inside to make sure everything stays together and doesn't come apart on me and then the next thing that you are going to do is you're going to get some nautical rope or whatever you know jute twine whatever you want to use and you're gonna wrap the bottom of the now what's gonna be a stand and you're just gonna take that nautical rope glue one piece on there and then just wrap it around the whole thing and this one has teeth on it so it kind of holds it in you don't have to keep hot gluing it I didn't hot glue again until I got here to the bottom and that was just to hold that um the bottom loose end down and I had to cut it because it was just a little bit too long and then once I was done doing that that part of it is done like I said I didn't have to hot glue anything else except for the top piece to hold that first piece in and then I did like a little ring around the bottom just to, you know, secure that loose end at, you know, that I finished off with. <clears throat> so once I am done doing that, we're going to work on the rest of the tear tray. And um, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to paint the top of it black. Now you can stain it and then I guess depending on what, you know, what you're using or what your decor style is or what your colors are, you can paint it. You know whatever color you want and you don't necessarily have to use nautical rope or this jute twine you can use yarn or you know anything else um, that you want or if you want to leave it that wire looking you can do that too then um, the next thing I'm gonna do actually is I'm going to no I'm gonna paint this next sorry I was trying to decide whether I wanted it to be like the other one or if I wanted to cover up the bottom part and I decided, yeah, I didn't like the way it looked with that black hanging out. So I'm just going to go ahead and give this a good coat of the Waverly ink, which is black. And I just went around and gave the whole thing one good coat till it was all covered up. And I didn't do the inside because you're not going to see it. Um, but if you want to, you can. Then I'm just going to go ahead and I'm going to hot glue this uh, bottom part of it to the wood piece and that is your tear tray i think it kind of gives a farmhouse it could also be like uh industrial you can i mean you can make it look however you want if you wanted to paint it black and white you know you can make it match your decor however you want and like i said you can stain the popsicle sticks also so that's completely up to you so for my next DIY and I'm going to show you a picture of all of them at the end rather than trying to you know insert pictures of each of them I just decided to take one you know picture so the next one I'm going to be using one of these foam dice from the Dollar Tree and I saved that netting because it turns out to be really cute um chicken wire for smaller projects so definitely keep all your little bags and your onion bags and stuff like that they work great so I'm gonna unravel one part of my nautical rope here just so that it lays flat on my die my die my dice it's only one so my die <laughs> and then once that sticks on there I'm gonna make a little loop and that's gonna be like the little hanger or 
you know, whatever you want to call it. And then I'm going to hot glue that put the part down. You'll, you can see what I'm talking about better than I'm explaining it. <clears throat> Excuse me. And then you're just going to go ahead and wrap it around in the way, you know, the way that the, the rope is going for this part of it. And you're just going to go all the way around. Um, and I hot glued as I went just because I didn't want it to like unravel or, you know, fall apart or anything like that. So I just put glue along the whole piece. Now you can choose not to do this, obviously, and just kind of hot glue one part, wrap it and, you know, do whatever. Oh, I didn't hot glue the whole thing. So I lied. I'm sorry. So I did hot glue kind of along the way here and there. I didn't hot glue the whole thing. So then I'm just going to go ahead, secure that edge. And then I had to get another rope because I ran out of the other one. And then we're just going to do the same thing here. Then once you're done covering that one side of it, you're going to work on the other side and you're just going to do the same thing and just go in the opposite direction. And that's it. You, again, just kind of hot glue when you feel like you need it just so that it doesn't unravel. And that's it. And you just wrap it around. And I I went through, let me see, I went through one pa a whole pack of um, rope and like maybe a half of another one it was some what I had left from another project so I want to say it was about a half a bundle of rope so for this part of it you're going to want to make sure you get underneath that little loop just so that it sticks out and you don't want to you know hold it down there and then just again just go ahead and wrap all the way around this side so that the whole thing is covered and at the end you you know you're gonna have to add a little bit more hot glue kind of in places where the rope was moving around and you can see the color of the dye um, you can paint the dye if you want to it's totally up to you but I just decided to leave it blue and it worked out fine you can't see any of the blue once I went through and you know fixed the spots that were kind of uncovered so I'm just going to go ahead, wrap it around this whole part, and that's it. I'm going to show you guys here in a minute how the whole thing kind of came together. And like I said, I just added rope wherever, or rope and glue wherever I needed it just to make sure that there was no blue showing, that all the pieces were covered and all the pieces were held down. And once I was done doing this, I did uh, take it upstairs and use a, a lighter to kind of burn off the loose threads or whatever just because you could really see it they were just really bad this piece of rope I don't know what was wrong with it but this is what it looks like when it's all done so guys today I am participating in the five under five DIY challenge It's hosted by Crafty Cove and co-hosted by Farm Charm Cheek Farm Charm Cheek Farm Charm Chic. So definitely head on over and check out the playlist, check out their channels. There's going to be lots of inspiration and, you know, plenty of people on the playlist to get some very, very inexpensive, amazing decor ideas. So for my next DIY, oh, and I'm sorry, if you're coming over here from the playlist, welcome. Thank you so much for stopping by. I appreciate you. I hope you stick around, hit that subscribe button, hit that like button, leave a comment and let me know that you came over from the playlist. And if you are my returning subscriber, thank you so much. And you know, I appreciate you. So for my next one, you're going to take the stencil from the Dollar Tree, or if you're, you know, you got good uh, if you can draw well then you can just draw a spoon a fork a knife whatever you want to draw but I just chose to use this little stencil and then I took a popsicle stick and I traced the spoon and the fork onto the popsicle stick next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to use my box cutter and I'm going to cut the shapes out now this is tedious and just be careful you know that you don't cut yourself but just keep going over it with the box cutter and it does just snap off eventually it takes a few a few tries but it does come off pretty you know pretty easily and my little hand sander kind of ran out of grit there so I had to switch it off and that's how easy this is I love this little hand sander I have the uh 
I have it linked in my description box if you're interested. And then I'm just going to go ahead and sand down the edges. If you don't have a little hand sander like this, you can use a high grit like nail file. And you can get those at the Dollar Tree. They work just as well. And they probably even work better because they're small. And you can kind of get into the grooves a little bit better. But nonetheless, um, or just some sandpaper works fine. So I'm going to do the same thing with the fork. Go ahead and uh, cut that one out. And if you don't have any popsicle sticks or you don't feel comfortable doing this, you can use foam board or just like some construction paper, cardboard, anything like that. I just wanted that dimension. I wanted it to just kind of pop out of the um, out of the little picture there. So then what I'm going to do is I'm using this piece of canvas from one of the Dollar Tree, you know, canvases, how we use the frames and then we keep the canvases or I keep them on. So I'm using them. <laughs> so then I'm just going to go ahead and place the little fork and spoon on there and just write out the word eat. Now you can, you know, put whatever you want. You don't even have to put words if you don't want to. Then I'm going to take some regular size popsicle sticks, cut them, paint them black, glue them together and make a little frame around the words and the fork and the spoon so that it turns into a little picture frame. And then once I'm done making the frame, I'm just going to glue the frame on there and glue the spoon and the fork um, onto the canvas so that it turns into, like I said, a little a little picture frame with a cute little picture inside of it. And, you know, I've seen bigger pictures like this, like at Hobby Lobby or Kirkland's or, you know, whatever full size pictures very similar to this. So I thought it'd be cute to make one that fits your tear tray. Or if you're into minis, this would look really cute, like in a miniature kitchen setup or whatever. But this would be perfect right now for my tear tray. So once I am, let me see, once I'm done making the frame, I'm just going to go ahead, glue the fork and the spoon onto the picture, wherever, you know, wherever you want it. And then glue the frame onto the canvas. And once you're done gluing the frame onto the canvas... Um, you just cut around, cut around it so that there's no edges of the canvas sticking out, you know, outside of the frame. And I did it this way just because I wanted, you know, the, the space to work because it is a small um, piece. It's just easier to work with the big canvas and then kind of cut it down. If that makes any sense, hopefully it does. It's just easier to work with the big canvas and then, you know, cut it down. And then I wanted this to stand up on my tear tray. So I just took one of the tumbling tower blocks from the Dollar Tree and just glued it onto the back of the little picture frame. And again, if you wanted to, you can put some jute twine on here and hang it up on a wall or something like that. But it's, you know, it's small, so it works perfectly for a tear tray. Now for my last one, I know you guys are wondering what I'm doing with the mouse trap. Well, here you go. Mouse traps are made out of wood. So all I did was, and they're the perfect size for like little tear trays. So I bought a couple packs of them and I'm just going to be using the wood. So those little, you know, the mechanism comes off pretty fairly easily. There's a little sticker on there. You're just going to sand all that down, kind of clean it up a little bit, smooth it out. And then I'm going to be using the same stencil again, kind of doing the same thing. So I'm not going to show you all the steps again. But I'm going to use the rolling pin this time. And again, if you can, you know, if you draw well and you want to draw a rolling pin or whatever you want to draw, by all means, do that. And I didn't add the little space that's in the rolling pin. I just went all the way through. And then I'm just going to go ahead and cut the rolling pin out. The rolling pin was really easy to cut out. So I just went ahead, cut that out. And you could use scissors. It just... It does end up splintering the, you know, the popsicle stick a little bit more. But if you want to use scissors, you obviously can. Then go ahead, smooth it out. And then I'm going to use um, these correction markers. They're like to correct wood furniture. And I get these at the Dollar Tree. And they come in a pack of three. And they have three, like, different colors in the pack. And I just went with this stain color here. You can use shoe polish or... Um, that stuff antique wax whatever you want to use or you can paint it 
white or black or whatever color goes with your decor and then I'm just going to take my acrylic paint marker and I'm going to write the word bake on here and of course you can write whatever you want to write or write nothing at all and just go ahead and use it just like that that'd be cute too and then I'm just going to take the rolling pin and I'm going to glue it on to the mousetrap or right now, I guess the frame. <laughs> and then once I am done gluing that on there, that's it. Oh, I'm going to put a Jenga block on the back so that it stands up. But guys, that's it. Those are my five under five. None of them cost me more than like $2 each. So that's it, guys. I hope you enjoyed those and until next time, be blessed and be the reason someone smiles. Bye.